my sock gamers and welcome to the Northern Europe Roundup. Yeah, we do England and the Netherlands uh, in this one. I was thinking, shall I add something on? But to be honest, I only saw a little bit of Premier League, saw most of the highlights and I saw some uh, of the Eredivisie. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. And yeah, let's see how much I, re I remember. I'm a little bit all over the place at the moment. The reason is I don't only have my normal trope, but although I'm reducing the hours on that one, I'm starting to teach and, you know, I need to prepare at least the first part, you know, syllabus and all that kind of, kind of stuff before you really get rolling. And then it will hopefully ease down a little bit, but I have to find space in the schedule for that as well. In addition, you know, new schedule at work as well and kind of a toughish task that I have at the moment, but yeah. You're not interested in that, you're interested in what I thought about the Premier League this weekend. And so let's uh, go through the results. Um, it was a very interesting round in the sense that almost everyone in the relegation zone won. And we have quite some remarkable results in there. First of all, Norwich against Leicester. Uh, Norwich finally gets a win. Finally, finally, finally. Has been a long time coming. And yeah, Leicester, you know, you have... Now, I think Ward is out, they have, um, you know, they have their missing people and uh, makes it not easy on them, but they had uh, most of the game in that one, however, Lewis in the 70th gets a win for Norwich, and I'm, although I want Leicester to do really well, I'm happy that Norwich gets a win, I would love if they could stay up just for the nice different jerseys that they're having. I'm wearing Crystal Palace because they got a win at Brighton. Uh, Jordan Ayo gets the goal. I have to say also in the 70th, a little bit of a lucky one because I mean Brighton many chances, many shots but no goals but Crystal Palace a little bit clinically. 100th game, Crystal Palace game for Roy Hodgson so that's a celebration style in one of the weirdest rivalries uh, in soccer that I can think of. Bournemouth, Chelsea, could have watched it one, didn't really. Um, I think Chelsea had a 1-0 lead uh, at the half uh, through Marcos Alonso. Um, then within three minutes, Bournemouth turns it around uh, Lerma and King. And then it's again Alonso, who is basically the goal getter for Chelsea these days. That doesn't fold well for a team, if that's the case. And born uh, and dates only 2 2. I think a result that helps neither. Similar things could be said, I guess, for Newcastle versus Burnley, which ends goalless. Newcastle having not been scoring uh, many goals as, as of late. I think it was the second, third, fourth uh, goalless game in a row, something like that. Really not good. Then West Ham, who already had a good showing last Monday against Liverpool. Uh, finally can back it up. I mean, they seemed like dead. And suddenly they get a big win over um, Southampton, who are now coming a little bit back to earth again. You know, they uh, had this great run um, Christmas, early January, and now they're coming a little bit back with a not-so-successful run. Uh, Bowen gets the first goal, Obafemi can equalize, but Allaire um, scores a pretty nice goal to make it 2-1 and Antonio seals the deal 3-1 for West Ham. Probably should have worn my West Ham jersey, but you know, this one I almost look like a little bit better. <laughs> uh, what I really should have is a Watford jersey to tell you that Watford against Liverpool, I mean, the first half there was not much happening. I saw most of the game actually and it uh, I had to play with the family, a board game, uh, but, it, but that was one, but I had the game on. Uh, but there was really not much happening except for a pretty horrific injury for De Olofeo, who seems to be out with an ACL injury, something like that. But in the second half, Watford turned around and Liverpool seemed kind of too lax. So I, I don't know how it can happen. But Ismail Lazar completely took them apart. Uh, nicely played goals. There were some errors in there. I think the third one by Dini, that was a definite uh, error by Al Alexander Arnold. Um, 3-0 scoreline. I have to say this was uh, came out entirely unexpected because Liverpool has been a little bit shaky as of late and you know they lost to Atleti and on but that scoreline is huge because they have not lost by three in a long long time. So no uh, invincibles for Liverpool. Arsenal fans will be rejoicing. Uh, 
they didn't play this so uh, this was probably the best result from uh, the weekend and yeah Jürgen Klopp is saying we have to refocus now now we can play a little bit free I have to say I don't quite get it I think Liverpool not worried for the league but I'm a little bit worried for the Champions League if I'm honest um, City Arsenal did not play because of the League Cup final which we'll talk about in a sec uh, Everton Manchester United <laughs> 1-0 <laughs> for Everton through Calvert-Lewin. Uh, huge De Gea mistake. Uh, he just has the ball, has, has the ball waiting. Uh, Calvert-Lewin is coming his way. He wants to shoot it out and hits the ostrich leg of Calvert-Lewin. It's the third minute, it's 1-0 for Everton. Please do the same thing against Lusk. Though Manchester United actually... They look like a solid, solid team now with uh, Bruno Fernandes in there and he gets the equalizer uh, through a really nice shot. Yes, there are discussions. Should Pickford have saved it? It looked not unsavable, but on the other side, when I look at the swerve, was not a bad shot either. So yeah, uh, there was some late drama with a goal being disallowed for which the Angelotti was complaining because uh, C. Sigurdsson was lying there seemingly obstructing. No, no, I don't know, obstructing. It's one of those uh, definite judgment calls. Angelotti got sent off, but he didn't seem to take it too bad. But yeah, that was an interesting game. And probably the game of the weekend was, yeah, Watford, Liverpool was, was from Israel, but from the game itself, Spurs against Wolves, I think, was a uh, really interesting uh, one. Bergwijn slams one home early on in the 13th, but Doherty can equalize. Um, and because Wolves is a really interesting team to watch. Uh, if they get into good form, they are a fun team to watch. However, Serge Aurier with a really nice shot uh, makes it 2-1 for Spurs at the half. However, it was not to last. Diego Jota slams it in, I think, from a short distance. Um, very irresistible move, to be honest. It was very fast. And then uh, Rao Jimenez uh, gets the winner for Wolves. Huge result for them. Spurs also... You know, uh, Mourinho is already saying he wants to have the, the season. So let's look at the Premier League table after these results. Liverpool still far ahead, but now with a game more. Manchester City has a game ahead, but it's still many, 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 many points. 19 points. If Manchester City can get that win against Ar 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 Arsenal at the moment, it's 22. So it's still Liverpool very comfortably ahead. Um, the battle for the Champions League spot is interesting because we know Manchester City probably will be banned so uh, it's up until fifth that we have to look at and yeah Wolves could get in there Spurs I'm afraid will not get get, get in there unless Leicester and Chelsea continue their rather bad form if we go towards the bottom you know uh, I see here Arsenal dropping but you know they didn't play so uh, that really the, the, the doesn't count if Arsenal um, wins against City which is admittedly not super likely they could draw level with Spurs but have still uh, the worst goal difference um, similar story with Sheffield United who probably are favorite against um, Aston Villa and they then can leapfrog uh, United and Wolves um, in the relegation zone I think Crystal Palace has about enough points with that win but you know you need probably a little bit more if you look here um, West Ham 27 Brighton 28 here is where it really becomes interesting. Watford, Bournemouth, Aston Villa, Norwich. Unfortunately, it doesn't look good as much as I would like them to stay up. But I also ask myself, um, you know, West Ham, Watford, Aston Villa, those are all teams that I think should be up there. Probably West Ham and Aston Villa more than Watford. But hey, uh, that's just to do the historical merit, not because I have anything against these teams. Um, we did not talk about Aston Villa and Manchester City because they met in the League Cup final where City got a really quick lead through Aguero in the 20th and Hernandez in the 30th. Uh, you really had to worry for Aston Villa who actually had a drew first blood, had the first chance but then City took like 10 minutes to get going and then they were about to eat Villa alive. And all the league games have been actually quite clear. However, um, Pep had a little bit up his sleeve. He did not play his first uh, choice team all the way through. But, you know, still, he has one of the best squads in Europe. And then a little bit out of number, Samata pulls one back. Um, in the second half, City cannot close the deal. And so Villa uh, is in there and a very 
at the very end they hit the post from close range could have been but Manchester City wins another League Cup and runs away with the first trophy in the English club season. Let's move to the Netherlands, uh, where we had two huge games, uh, namely PSV against Feyenoord, which ended in a 1-1 draw. Um, relatively good match from what I could tell from the highlights, with chances on both sides, so um, definitely deserve it one. And then what Ajax showed against AZ was bordering ridiculousness. AZ actually dominated Ajax uh, quite comfortably. Yes, Ajax had more of the game, Ajax also had chances, but given uh, who is AZ and who, given who is Ajax, uh, AZ had way better chances than Ajax had during the entire game. And they already got an early lead through uh, Boadou. And believe me, I saw AZ just this Thursday playing Lusk. I have this Boadou didn't register with me. I had to check on the team sheet. Uh, is, was he really playing? Yes, he was. It was Thanks who was so uh, da dangerous. Then they got the chances. They have to make it 2-0 at the half. If not, you have to close the deal. I think they scored one that was taken back by VAR. Uh, then Ajax came, finally showed something, but in the end Idrissi, after a really super Cisper Cup minus from his uh, from uh, his own box more or less, uh, plays a long ball and that's it, can make it 2-0 and they draw now level with Ajax with that. I've been joking today, given that AZ has beaten Ajax twice this season and that Lask has beaten AZ comfortably, and also PSV in two games comfortably, I think Lask should apply for the Dutch Championship. I'm really serious about that. If we're gonna get the Austrian one, we should get the Dutch one, because we own that league. <laughs> I love my Eredivisie, to be honest. I love Dutch soccer in general. So let's go to the table. Ajax only leading because of uh, superior goal difference, but uh, level on points with uh, AZ. And Feyenoord Sunday is only six points behind PSV, seven points behind. Could there be a closer title race? Remains to be seen. Willem Dwe is also in there. And then I think uh, Utrecht, Vitesse, Groningen and so on. That's a little bit further down. Well, that was it for my Northern Europe roundup for today. Let me know if you, uh, anything that I missed, uh, because you know I'm a little bit crazy at the moment. Should go to sleep very soon. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.